Begin by finding a position of your body that feels comfortable for you right now. Maybe it's seated in a chair or a cushion. Maybe it's lying down. Maybe it's another posture. But establish yourself in a position of comfort and ease. Intentionally position your body in a way that feels comfortable for you right now. Prioritize that, your own comfort. And really settle into that comfort. Enjoy the comfort. Having established your body in a comfortable position, allow your body to relax. Notice if there's any muscular tension present for you at this time in your body. Perhaps in the jaws or the shoulders, the arms, the hips, the legs your hands or your feet. If you find muscular tension anywhere in your body, see if you can gently invite that tension to relax, to loosen, to ease up. And to whatever extent you're able to find a sense of relaxation at this time. Really enjoy that. Feel the relaxation in your body and savor it like a bite of a delicious meal. If at any time you become tight in your body, if you notice that tension has returned, you can always relax again. Coming from and returning to a place of relaxation in your body. And if you'd like, if it feels good for you at this time, gently invite a smile to your face. A gentle, easy smile. It doesn't have to be a huge grin. Even a slight, small smile on your face.
knowing that when your physical body smiles, it moves you emotionally towards happiness. So if it feels good, allowing that process to begin. See if you can make this place in your body a kind of home base for metta practice. Being comfortable, relaxed, with a gentle, easy smile on your face. And if you find that you stray from this place, if you become uncomfortable or not relaxed, or your smile fades, knowing that you can always return here and that even this is loving kindness practice, being comfortable and relaxed in the body with a gentle, easy smile on your face. Feel what that feels like so you can come here again if you need to. Having prepared the body for loving kindness practice, begin to incline the mind towards loving kindness practice. Bring to mind one or two or three or even more things. You can summon a sense of gratitude for, that you can feel grateful for. These might be big things, they might be small things. They might be ordinary everyday things, or they might be unique and special to this time in your life. Reflect on one or more things that you can feel grateful for. As you reflect on these things that you can feel gratitude for, notice if there's any response or reaction in the body. If you feel any warmth or joy or satisfaction as you reflect on these things that you can be grateful for, Notice that and really enjoy it. Feel the gratitude in your body.
Continue to reflect on things that you can feel grateful for, for another moment. Very good. Now bring to mind someone who's relatively easy for you to feel love for. An easy to love person or animal. This might be a real person in your life. Perhaps a loved one or small child or a pet. Or might even be an imaginary child or pet, a baby or a dog or a cat or anyone you like really. Just bring to mind someone who's relatively easy for you to feel love for. For tonight's practice period, see if you can use mental talk, phrases in your mind, to direct love towards this person or animal. You can use the same phrase over and over again. Like, may you be so happy. May you be so happy. May you be so happy. Or you can use a custom phrase that's specific to this person or animal. Or even a series of phrases, just telling them how much you love them, how much you want them to be happy. See if you can use mental talk, phrases in your mind Cultivate an attitude of loving kindness, friendliness, and goodwill towards this easy to love person or animal. Again, out of the corner of your eye, be aware of how your body feels as you cultivate this attitude of loving kindness. If there's any response in the body, if there's a felt sense of love and care or happiness of any kind, Notice that and really enjoy it. Feel it in the body and steer in that direction.
course, if you're finding that using mental talk or phrases is difficult for you, feel free to switch to using images in your mind or even just a felt sense of love or care in the body, both valid options. But if it seems to be working for you or you're enjoying it, continue to use mental talk phrases to cultivate an attitude of love for this easy to love person or animal for another moment. In a moment, we'll transition to cultivating loving kindness for our insect friends. But you're welcome to stay here with your easy to love person or animal or move on to someone else other than insects. And if it proves hard to cultivate loving kindness for insects, you can always return here to your easy to love person or animal. Always a valid option. If you'd like, you can transition to cultivating the same attitude of loving kindness towards insects. These small creatures are an essential part of our ecosystem, of our planet. And even though they're small and we may not find them beautiful or we may not find them pleasant to be around, we know that they're a very important part of our life on this planet and that they're living beings too. And so we can cultivate this same loving kindness, even for insects. So I'll speak about a few insects for the next few minutes. And if you'd like, as I speak about them, you can cultivate the same attitude of loving kindness for the insects that I mentioned, using mental talk phrases in your mind or images or even just a feeling of love in your body, if that's available to you. All of these are perfectly valid options. Now, some insects are very beautiful, like caterpillars and butterflies, which inspire people to make art portraying the vivid colors of the butterflies and are a wonderful metaphor for growth in this life, transitioning from being a caterpillar to a butterfly. May caterpillars and butterflies be happy.
Some insects are very useful. They even create food that we can eat, like honeybees, which pollinate our flowers and create honey that we can eat. That's so delicious. We love to put in our desserts. May honeybees be happy. And there are other insects that help cultivate the quality of our soil, like ants and beetles, working so hard to enrich the soil, helping it to air out and decompose various vegetables and organic matter, preserving the quality of the soil. May ants and beetles be happy. May moths and spiders and wasps be happy. May ladybugs be happy. May centipedes and millipedes be happy.
And may our other insects friends be happy. Even the ones that we sometimes dislike or have an aversion to, like mosquitoes and cockroaches. They just want to be happy too. May they be at peace. May they be undisturbed. May they even they be happy. Knowing that they too play a vital role in our ecosystem. And that simply because they're living beings, they deserve the same kind of happiness that we deserve, that our easy to love person or animal deserves. So wishing that for them, cultivating that same attitude of loving kindness. Boundless love for all beings without conditions or reservations. Loving kindness for all of our insect friends. Very good. Now, take a moment to look back on this practice period. Remember what it was like for you, what happened. Recalling if there were any challenges that you faced or any insights or shifts that you had, any lessons that you learned. Reflect on what this practice period was like. And as you're ready, at your own pace, come out of the meditation. <laughs> 